Back in 96, before The Daily Show and The Colbert Report really gained prominence for taking aim at the news, Ken Finkelman let loose with this at com. We have the story on the two Canadian golfers hit by lightning in Florida. Did they die? Yes, they died. Good. Done. That's our lead. The newsroom was a razor-sharp satire, a big hit on CBC, picked up by PBS, but the target was not the news, but rather the people in the newsmaking machine, people like George Finley. Okay, here, I want you to take this. No, I hesitate to give that to you because I don't have that many left. Okay, don't drive. You can do the news, but don't drive. Shallow, narcissistic, neurotic, George, uh, kind of a version of Ken himself, if he stripped away all his filters. The George character is back, by the way, on a new show called Good God. We'll get to that in a second. But like his alter ego, Ken has had a colorful life as well. Grew up in a Jewish family in what was then a very waspy Winnipeg. In the 70s, he was a writer on the Frankie Howard show on CBC. He's been known to knock back a few with the likes of Tom Waits. Spent some time in Hollywood. Wrote Grease 2. You know that he's the best. Travolta did not return, wrote and directed another sequel, Airplane 2. And when he returned to Canada, it was the newsroom that cemented his reputation as a wicked satirist. He's timely, too. The setting for his new show, Good God, is basically a Canadian version of Fox News called Right TV. It should be not only uh, our money is our money, but their money is our money as well. I think we should be trying to get all the money. Isn't that competition? <laughs> What on earth did they do? Yeah, we Holy just we're, shit. We're, we're finding stuff. He just uh, he got yeah. tipped off to the fact that we yeah. found an old clip of him. Welcome yeah. to the show, man. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I've never been in front of a. Actually, I was once in front of a live audience. Yeah. Is that a courtroom? Is that how it worked, or is this like for real? <laughs> no, I was in front of a live audience. Uh, I look at that thing. It says a Zosky clip. It was the very first time I ever did anything. Um, in front of an audience, and it was a live to tape thing. And um, I was on with Rick Moranis, and we'd written a sketch, and we were supposed to perform it. And, um, and, and, I, and I went out during the afternoon to rehearse, and it was, since my bar mitzvah, the very first time, I was paralyzed with fear. I, couldn't, I, I absolutely could not speak. I'd never had that experience before. I'm not exaggerating. Really? I couldn't speak. So um, before the show, and we were sitting in the, in the green room, and, and I, I'm just in a complete state. Um, uh, Tom, ha uh, Tom Waits was on the show, and he said, hey, man, I said, I just, and, was up, and there was a studio up at uh, a Young around Summerhill there, yeah. and he said, hey, man. I think that was a liquor store. <laughs> he said, there's a liquor store across the street, oh, nice. <laughs> He said, go over and get some booze, I'll have some with you, and you know, you'll be fine. I got so loaded. <laughs> with Tom Waits. I, un unbelievable, because he asked, because I hadn't been, I hadn't been eating, and, and I, was, I was, you know, and it was, a Disaster. When you were growing up in Winnipeg at the time, what was it like to be a young Jewish kid? Because I know that the, the country is different now than it used to be. Well, I, I was brought up in an Anglo-Saxon neighborhood, and uh, and I always felt that the Jews rented the space and that the Anglo-Saxons owned it, and um, that that uh, you know my neighbors used to go out and they put canoes on the on the, on the car and go out hunting in the fall, the jackets and guns, and I, I was amazed by this. You know, it was <laughs> like it's like such a strange kind of behavior, and I, I and I never really felt that I belonged in that in, in any anywhere close to that. And well, there's one thing to feel like you don't belong, and there's another thing to be told you don't belong. Did you ever experience any of that kind of stuff? Well, my mother was a, a really good golf player, and there was a country club in Winnipeg called Saint. Charles, which is actually still there, and and uh, and, and it was one of the best country clubs, and, and uh, she had to play in the Manitoba Amateur, and um, I remember as a little kid, I can remember the argument in the house because there, there was something about not letting her play because she was Jewish. So it, it's really remarkable. In my lifetime, there was lots of clubs that were absolutely, you know, no Jews allowed, and and. and um, and uh, I, I thought that they would have those signs like on the tees, like like at the, at the fairways, like 200 yards, and then right beside it, no Jews, just. <laughs> Just reminding you, you know. Um, but um, but I, I noticed you were wearing a Palestine bracelet. Well, I wore it because I thought you were going to be wearing a bracelet. Well, usually today. I have my Make Poverty History bracelet, but I, I, I don't have it on today. But now you're wearing that. You're I not... got this in, I, I was in Israel um, a few months ago, and, uh, and uh, I, I, I met this guy, his name was Yehuda Shal, and he was a soldier, in, in the, uh, in, and he was stationed in the West Bank in 86. And, and, um, and he started an organization called um, uh, uh, Breaking the Silence, which is... Um, to tell the truth about the, the Israeli occupation of the West Bank. And then when we drove around and we, and we drove down the, the main arteries through the West Bank and saw 
Arab village after Arab village and then Jewish settlement after Jewish settlement. And, and every Arab village had this huge gate uh, that could be locked, metal gate that could be locked to, uh, within minutes mm -hmm. if there was another uprising by the, by the military. They can close the entire place down. You go into the West Bank, it's, I, I've never seen anything like my life. I was absolutely shocked. I'm not young, I'm not naive. I've never seen anything like it. It's a complete totalitarian regime controls all of the Arab population of the West Bank, absolutely without rights. And, and our Canadian foreign minister goes there and says it's the greatest, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, 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 one of the great democracies. We won't just stand behind Israel. We stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel. And this, and, no, and not to even acknowledge the West Bank exists. They're, they're small-minded people who have a tremendous amount of power and they don't have any, uh, they, 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 they really don't understand what's going on in the world and so they may have simple solutions to really yeah, complex but, problems but and that's were, why we have the jets. But yeah, well, <laughs> and that's not the Winnipeg jets. No, not those jets, you told me yeah. after, yeah, yeah. But, we, but these were the, the, the people elected by the country. This is who the country wanted. The ones yeah, I think the politicians generally across the border are, are, are maybe of lower intelligence than the general population. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not joking, I'm not, okay. I'm not I, I, I think they is, are. Is, is this why, that, so you, you weren't content being an outsider as a young Jewish boy in Winnipeg which you decided to be an outsider as a Jewish boy within the Jewish community by walking around with a Palestine bracelet at the time. You, so you, you, you don't yeah, lose the outsider tag. Yeah, you're right. I'm kind of playing that role, too. You're like, yeah. um, <laughs> this is part of the reason why, why this character keeps coming back and you can do a show like Good God and you can stay in the concept of a newsroom because it allows you in some weird way to be in the world of, of current events. Yeah, yeah, of course. Without having to do it. I wouldn't. They wouldn't have me. You know. I mean, it's <laughs> like, you know, I would like to run for mayor against Rob Ford, and, and uh, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I it's just uh, a picture, a bigger picture of me. You know, say, here's a bigger guy. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm bigger by ten pounds. You know. Well, no, tell me what, the idea of a good guy. The idea of taking a kind of a a. Fox News, for lack of a better phrase, yeah. setting a show inside that inside yeah. the network. I like the idea that you're struggling with morality, struggling with with righteousness, that, that you're actually approaching big issues inside this world. Yeah. Well, um, I, I don't want to sound too um, um, uh, what's the word? I don't know. I, 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 um, um, too serious, but. But actually, the, the trick, what I do, uh, every guy who, who's in the comedy world has one routine that, that is really the routine. And once you yeah. stop doing your routine, like Woody Allen, he's good at his routine. Once he stops doing his routine, yeah. he, he stopped being any good. And, and, and I, I have one routine, you know, that's it. And it's just this character and this sort of, this sort of satirical little, you know, game that I play. And, um, and, and, and the big part of it is the search for the truth. Now, no, the, this is and they're not necessarily the biggest truths in the world. They can be very small truths. It's like, it's like uh, you know, um, uh, how you buy toilet paper, or truth, you know, but some people lie about what they do, you know, some people don't. Yeah. So, so it's a, uh, it's the pursuit of the truth. Now, now it's only the, the pursuit of the truth, and, and, uh, and uh, I'm not interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in the pursuit of the truth, and I'm interested in the pursuit of the truth by revealing the lie and the paradox and the contradiction. And, and I, so I like to take the low road. I don't like taking the high road like, like, like Michael Moore. That's why I don't like Michael Moore, you know? I mean, it's because he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a preacher, you know? He thinks he has the truth and he's gonna tell you what the truth is. I much prefer to show the bad guys and, 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 and so that, that's, the, that's the gimmick. And it's a, it's a trick. And I'm, now I've given it up. Anyone else can go out and do it. <laughs> no, no, you haven't given it up. I mean, get, getting, getting it on television is an accomplishment, which you've been able to do over the years. So, you know, speak, let's go back to that Zosky interview you did. Let's play a clip oh, from, uh, from no, Ken Ozowski. this is going to be horrible. No, because be I'm look younger there. Well, we all look younger then, right? As Mitch yeah, Hedberg you said. You weren't born then. I may not have been, <laughs> but that's not the point. <laughs> okay. But I have No, you know what? Basically, that is the point. You can feel very <laughs> proud of the fact that, <laughs> that you're younger. I'm not that young, but okay, well, play, 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 play. okay, go, go. What's the what? difference? What's the essential difference? In Canada, oh my God. Uh, working for the CBC, it's a little easier to get a show. In fact, you only have to show your driver's license sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Some shows are so bad that you don't have to show your high school marks. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, an, there is much more freedom in Canada because it's not controlled. Anyway, when I talk about Canada, I really talk about the CBC. And it, it's not controlled by businessmen. So you're talking about um, it's Canada on the Great Peter Zowski Show. I have no memory. I have no memory of that. You have no memory of that. No memory. And you weren't drunk for the interview. No, no. I, I, I wasn't drinking that. No, not that day. So, so you started that later. Yeah. The, but the idea that that you could get away with more in this country, and I guess at the time, and even maybe to be true, yeah. the CBC still, but. You're dealing with a network. The idea of on your new show, yeah. American media is the corporate media. Yes, that's yes. what it is right now. Is it well, still? I mean, like you're still managing to get shows on the air. Well, well, uh, well, yeah. But you know, um, 
it, it, it's, I think the reason, one of the reasons I think I'm, I'll tell you the truth, I, I'm very suspicious of power, you know, and, um, and TMN, who's a, a network that does this, they were very good to me. They were like, just like the CBC, they didn't give me any heavy notes, they didn't, they, they really gave me a lot of creative control. But, but I, I suspect that they have, to get their license, they have to do a certain amount of Canadian production. And that they really, that, that the lion's share of their dough is coming in by, 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 by acquisition of American shows, and they put those on, and that's why people buy the license, buy the, by the, uh, the, the, the their, their pay channel. So I'm a bit of a loss leader. And so, you know, I'm not such a bad bet. I, I, I bet my numbers aren't that, th that hot. Yeah, so, you so, you can look at it this way, though, not lost leader. If you think of it like the Ramones, right? They didn't sell as many records, but we're in the nascent stage of Canadian television, and we really are, yeah. because of cable, yeah. um, that it's, you're kind of blazing trails. I mean, what you did with Newsroom did blaze a trail well, in this character, so maybe it's not that you're a lost leader as much as you're just in the beginning stages of helping to build what we needed to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, about the CBC, and I was on the CBC there, and I had a lot good things to say about the CBC. And the CBC was very good to me. And, um, uh, but, but then, well, while I was there, I started to see what was going on. They, 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 they started to concentrate on numbers. Um, they, 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 were, they, were, they, they got their budget cuts under that guy, Tony Monero, which was a long time ago when I was there. And then the cuts started. And what happens is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You make budget cuts to the CBC. Uh, you force them to put on programs which they think will get advertising. So they start looking at the numbers. So they start using a rating system which was invented by Procter & Gamble and NBC to determine how much to charge for ads, how many people are watching the show. NBC doesn't care how good their shows are. They have absolute garbage. If they get big numbers, then, then they're good. Those are because the numbers are everything. It's just about money. CBC has a different agenda. It's a cultural institution. And they, so, they, so they have a different responsibility. They have a responsibility to kind of produce shows that, 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 that enrich the culture. And, and, and the more you start playing, competing with CTV and Global for those advertising dollars because you have to compete for those advertising dollars and the closer you become to them, the less you are distinguished from them and there are the less reason there is for the public to take their tax dollars out of their pocket and pay for them. Rating sometimes just means more people and, if, and why not make a show that people can watch? It's just that your entire reason for being can't be numbers. Well, there has to be public value no, no, in that no, too. No, 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 because what you're doing then is that then you're writing the show for this, for this, this abstract which is called the audience because you want audience numbers. So as soon as you start writing for an abstract, you lose the point of view of the creative person. Yeah. The, 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 the best shows are the shows that are really come from point of view. Like John Stewart, that's his point of view. That's, yeah. that's him. And, and that's why I used to love Larry Sanders, because that was, that was his point of view. And that's the reason a lot of people love those shows. And, 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 and those guys, and Aaron Sorkin's got a show coming out as his point of view, you know, and, 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 and the, the, the strongest shows, are 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 shows which which have the integrity of the of, of, yeah. of the creator in mind. When you and I worked in Hollywood, man. Yeah. I worked in Hollywood. Dude, you wrote I, Airplane too, man. Yeah, that, that's, I'll tell you something. That's it's a, a good movie. It's, it's like still big up there. The residual <laughs> checks still come in. Do you seriously still get those checks? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hold it, hold it. Do you get any residual checks for Greece too? Oh yeah, huge. No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now listen. Now listen. Listen. Uh, I worked in Hollywood, and 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 they they will look at uh, they'll give you notes like this. You write you've written the script, and they'll say, uh, you know, we don't want the female lead to be a blonde, you know, 19 year old uh, cheerleader. Uh, we kind of we think that she should be a um, gorilla. <laughs> and you go, okay. You don't you don't you don't argue with it. You know. Yeah. And you say, okay. All right. You know, uh, because they're thinking, well, maybe it'll sell more. We'll do this, and and so, so, so you're you you have you have no investment mm -hmm. in, in 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 what's going on because they they, they pay a lot of money and they. And, and, and they want to get the numbers. And that's their only objective, is yeah. to get the widest audience. So that's what you're doing. You're writing for this thing called the audience, which is an abstract. There is no audience. I never think about the audience when I'm writing. Right. Not for a second. I only think about myself. With good God, I mean, were you just watching a lot of Fox News? Like, where, where, how did you decide? Let's, let's well, I, 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 yeah, uh, I, not a lot, because I, I don't get it here, but when I traveled, uh, I, I, I ski in the United States in a place called Jackson Hole, and I would always watch Fox News after I got back off the mountain, and then I, and I'd seen it um, in Europe, and uh, um, and um, uh, and and I thought that there there there, there was this there there was this general uh, 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 there's a a, a a real wild shift in America to to the right uh, because America the American Empire is collapsing and they and they they become defensive and they become vengeful and that's what that network is and people don't understand what's going on Americans don't understand they're completely confused people they're possibly the largest space on the planet with the most confused people 
in, in, the, in the world. But some of the great, in the world. Some of the great they, they brains... Don't know, so they, they, they want easy answers. So the easy answers come from this sort of anger and this vengeful sort of, sort of, sort of kind of broadcasting. So people sit back and they go, oh, okay, that's the guy who's screwing me up, you know. And, and there's a little bit of that going on in Canada. Religion's coming into the, um, into the uh, public discourse in, 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 in politics. And, and religion is, 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 a, is an evil force, as far as I'm concerned. Because what religion does is it says it, it's absolutely unassailable. It, it is, it, it, it's not there to be challenged. Pe people in, in religious institutions don't challenge the idea. Well, did God do this, or did they do that, or, did he, you know, uh, or should he have done this, or shouldn't he have done that? It is just a. It is in the book. It's based on you know, faith, yeah. It is in the book, and 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 it is completely petrifying. It is. It stops discussion. It is ossifying. It is retrograde, and 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 it's what's killing America, and 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 we have to keep our eyes open. It's really good to see you. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Ken Kilgerman, everyone. So his television show airs on Monday nights. It's on the Movie Network, where you can see it. Uh, it's called Good God. We'll be right back.